So did anyone else get a firefly feeling to this uh, to this um, trailer? No, just just me. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah. So this is uh, my thoughts on the trailer for the CD, the San Diego Comic Con trailer for Star Trek Picard. Now, a little while ago, I did talk about the Star Trek, the uh, Picard trailer, and like how it was very dark. It was very moody. It was very much a old man Picard kind of series. Here, we actually get more of the story. And I wasn't kidding when I said I was getting a Firefly feel. Uh, you basically have Picard who has encountered a young woman who is uh, being hunted by, uh, by what it looks like, the Federation and the Romulan Remnant. Now, the other thing is that it looks like they're keeping what happened in the Star Trek films canon as well. Which was, yeah, we do see that Data has uh, died. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, they brought back Data. I think, I don't think it's Data. I think it may be B4, the prototype and youngest of, or eldest, depending on how you look at it. Like, youngest in terms of mentality um, that, um, that happened. Anyway. So, yeah, so B, so I think that might be B4 we saw at the end, but the major thing is that um, something happened to Romulan, and it looks like it may have been destroyed, and Picard, it did kind of wreck him in a way, and it looks like a lot, of, this is going to be very Romulan-centric. This very much looks like it's going to be a very Romulan-centric uh, event that's going on in Picard's life. Um, a lot of the crew look Romulan, or they could be Vulcan, I'm not sure. The other thing you have to look at is that this is a very unique crew. It looks more... They don't look like Starfleet officers. They look more like pirates. Um, again, going back to the... Uh, uh, what I was saying about uh, it kind of having a Firefly feel. Um, which is not bad. I liked Firefly. I mean, who doesn't like Firefly? Um, but it just kind of that feel. It's like it's not so much like that what Picard is doing is off the record, and they kind of insinuate that there may be something wrong mentally with Picard. Like there may be some kind of mental stigma that um, has kind of damaged Picard as a person, and it's really starting to mess with him. Because they even say like you know you can't even you know you can't even remember who you are anymore. Like you cannot you know f mentally fathom. You know what? You know what's real or reality. So maybe they're they're dealing with kind of like a, the dementia of of uh, what Picard is going through mentally, and the fact that he has to fight his way through essentially, you know, his own people. He has to literally fight through his own, uh, you know, through Starfleet to really get some answers. Is really cool. I really. Uh, I really like that. I really like that Star, you know, Picard once again is holding back on the whole thing of, you know, his, his, uh, what's the word? Um, his, his values, even if they, if, even if they clash with, uh, Starfleet, you know, he will take those values. The other thing that's interesting is that, yeah, it very much looks like the Borg are the big villain for at least this season. The Borg are back. And it's interesting to see them, because I did say that it, it, I was curious to see if they were going to do Borg stuff in here, because you just can't do TNG without Borg these days. And it's been very obvious that since Star Trek came back in the CBS show, in the CBS uh, streaming services, it's very obvious that they've re the, star the people behind star the, these Star Trek shows really want to do Borg stuff. They very clearly want to do... Borg-centric stuff, and that's really cool. And I'm really curious to see where the Borg are in terms... Like, how far have they gotten out of the Delta Quadrant? How far have they moved into the Alpha Quadrant? And how far have they gotten into into that kind of space in this time period? Um, have they been slowed down? Have they been stopped? Um, it's in, Yeah, it's, it's a really cool thought to have. Speaking of Borg, we also get the return of Seven of Nine from Voyager. Which is funny because they the previous day they announced IDW announced another Mirror Universe comic, but set the Mirror Universe version of Star Trek Voyager. So that's going to be cool. Um, but yeah, I was not expecting Seven of Nine. I don't know if she's going to be part of the main crew or just a supporting cast. I think it'd be cool to see her play off of Picard, and it's going to be interesting. Maybe I think she's probably going to be like the advisor against the Borg. Like she is going to be the advisor to uh, 
to uh, how to combat the Borg, because, well, she is kind of Borg, so that would make a lot of fucking sense. Anywho, the other thing that you would ha you know, you gotta take into is that Picard is not a spry young man. Hell, even in TNG, he wasn't a spry young man, and now it looks like he's going off the reservation, and how is that going to affect him mentally and as well as physically? You know, Picard is doing this mission, and he may have not taken into account that his health is on the line, very much like with several, you know, several other times where he's risked life and limb to uphold the integrity and morals of what he believes Starfleet to stand for. And that may be another case where we have this, you know, kind of conflict of what Star Starfleet is now as of compared to when Picard was in charge. Because again, like, we still hear this talk of, you know, this big rescue operation and we still don't know where exactly that is. Also, I think it's cute, just side note, I think it's really cute that Picard has a pit bull as a, you know, as his companion, because for those who are unaware, um, uh, Patrick Stewart is a very big advocate for pit bulls. He is a very big advocate for pit bulls and, you know, training as well as safe, you know, he's very much, you know, very much like he believes in that breed. So I, so I have a sneaking suspicion that that probably happened because he, uh, um, Patrick Stewart wanted a pit bull for uh, Picard. I feel like that was m very much his request, where he's like, yeah, I want, a pit I want Picard to have a pit bull instead of, like, some other kind of animal. Like, and you wouldn't think, like, Picard wouldn't have a dog like that. Not to say pit bulls are bad, I actually really love pit bulls. Um, remember, it's the trainer, not the breed. Um... And I really love that. Uh, so I, I really do enjoy that. And you, again, you don't think of a pit bull when you, you think of some regal kind of dog, like a Great Dane or something, for like Ricard in his older years. So I just find that funny. He's got this just little pit bull following him around. <laughs> um, but anyway, getting back to the point in hand, I actually thought at the end of the trailer when it was revealed that it, that data or before, you know, we still don't know who's who here. Um, the, you know, what was I going to say? Um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, I lost my train of thought, sorry. The, yeah, I, I was actually kind of, oh yeah, now I remember. I actually thought for a second that it was going to be Q. I actually really thought it was going to be Q at the end of the trailer, and I still got a sneaking suspicion that John Delancey may show up as Q in this series. So there you go, guys. Um, so you guys tell us here at Comic Universe, what do you guys think of Star Trek Picard? Are you guys excited? Are you guys not? Uh, what do you think the Borg play, uh, you know, what do you think the Borg endgame is here? What do you think about where the Romulans are in here? Because it looks like they've really got a shit hand deal dealt to them. So just comment below, let us know, and once again, uh, if you're new here, remember to like, share, and subscribe this video, and uh, be a part of Earth's Mighty Subscribers. I'm DPZ, and I will see you right here once more in the universe.